Ghana has um, developed what I call the parliamentary uh, tyranny of the parliamentary outcome. And I'm mm. looking at this MPP campaign and looking at what will happen in December. So what is the, uh, the deficit, the difference between MPP and NBC parliament right now? 63, 63, 63 uh, yeah. difference of 275 seats. Exactly. So uh, MPP have 63 more than NDC. More than NDC, yeah. Okay, now this is, a, this, is a, this is a phenomenon that I'm talking about. You see, when the 1992 constitution was written, and uh, we started in elections of 1992, the presidential election was held separately from the parliamentary election. So the, the date of the presidential election was different from the date of the parliamentary election. Yeah. In 1992, the presidential election was held in November. The one between Rawlings and Professor Dubois and others was held in November. Mm -hmm. And after the results had, were, were published, Rawlings had, had won. And then the, the MPP then boycotted the MPP and the others boycotted the parliamentary elections. So when we came back in 1996, it was to forestall this kind of boycott. Dr. Farijan and his people and the IPAC at the time worked together to get the parliamentary and the presidential elections to run the same way. What I have observed and we have done the research, what we have looked at and seen is that what we have in Ghana today is the tyranny of the outcome of the parliamentary elections. And it goes for both parties and against both parties. So in Ghana, if you are not able to win the parliamentary elections, it is totally difficult, impossible, and unheard of to say that you have won the parliament, the presidential mm -hmm. election. So the big example is uh, if you look at election 2000, for instance, uh, so if you look at 1996. So what was the, what was the outcome in 96? Let's look at what so, was it. Okay, so in, in 1996, um, 200 seats were up for grabs. Yeah. The N NPP secured 60. And of the 296, the NPP secured 60. Yeah, okay. Of, of course, yeah, and the N NDC won by 133 three seats. 133 seats. Yeah. One, three, two. That's uh, two, 1996. So this was it. So what was the difference? So 73. 73. Yes, between of the MPP 200 and NDC. Of the 200, NDC led MPP by 73. Exactly. That's a huge number. This is the 1996 election. Elections, yeah. Okay. So what happened in 2000? In 2000. Still, was it still 200? Still 200. Okay. NPP won by an addition of 40 seats, so they had 100 seats, and the NDC lost. Um, they, they had they garnered 92. Okay, so the uh, majority of 73 exactly. whittled away, mm -hmm. and you have MPP coming to win 40 more seats across the country. So, they, so you mean they kept their 60? Yeah. Did they really keep it, or there was some balance? We don't know. We don't know, but they, okay. they added 40 more Yeah. to the 60. Yeah. So the uh, N MPP had 60, and then they got 40 more. And they got yeah, 100. Exactly. And NDC had 92, a difference of eight. Eight. Yeah. That's at year 2000. Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about. So because the MPP won the parliamentary election, there was no way that any verdict that Professor Mills had won the presidential election would have been accepted, tolerated, or sounded valid, even if it was the case. You see this as we progress in the various years, how the presidential election outcome is subject to the tyranny of the parliamentary results outcome. So even though technically one party can win the parliament and another party can win the presidential, because we are running it together, it is incongruous to assume or fathom how somebody loses the parliamentary elections and wins the presidential elections. So that's the danger that we're going to have in Ghana where we're always going to have a tyranny of a parliamentary majority on voting day or the days after voting day. So what happened in 2000 was a major swing across the country yeah. because that is the kind of swing you need to be able to clean up a 73 majority mm -hmm. of 200 members of parliament if you are leading by 73 you need a major swing to turn the hand of the clock all the way back to have you come in front by eight so that was a major major swing in election 2000 let's see what happened in 2004. yeah so in, in 2004 the um constituencies increased to 230 230 constituencies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, 2000. in 2004, the, the number of constituencies increased to 230 and the NPP did win. Mm -hmm. So they won by 228 constituencies. 228. 128. They won 128. Yeah. Okay. And the NDC won only 94. What was the difference then? So the difference was 34. So the NPP for a 230 constituency 
led the NDC by 34. By 34, yeah. Okay, that was 2004. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, this is the kind of thing I talk about. And we know that in 2004, there was a lot of confusion about the outcome of the 2004 presidential election. The NDC accused the MPP of having Jacob Bechebelamte announcing the results at the castle. Bechebe was information minister. He announced the results at the castle before the electoral commissioner, Dr. Farijan, did announce his results. But whatever Obechebe Lamte announced, whatever NDC felt, because NDC had lost the parliamentary election, it was impossible for them to mount a sustainable and, and, and uh, arguable case that they had either won the presidential election or that the presidential election had gone into a second round. It was yeah, completely impossible because if you've lost the parliament, you've lost everything. Yeah. That's what I'm calling the tyranny of the parliamentary outcome. Mohammed Mumuni and others filed a writ at the court in those days. It would have been the first election petition challenging the outcome, not of the parliamentary results, but of the presidential election. So what we have in Ghana now is the tyranny of the parliamentary outcome. And we'll come and make the analysis about what will happen in 2020. We'll just make this short as a starting point. It's something that we are still looking at that we'll, we'll give some details. Let's look at 2008. What happened? Yeah, so to, in 2008, the, the we are still on 230 constituencies. 230 mm -hmm. constituencies closely contested yeah. between the NPP and NDC. The N NPP won just 108. 108. But close to the NDC's 113. 113? Yes. So Differences? The difference of five. Five, correct. Yeah. So in 2008, you had a difference of five at the parliamentary elections. So the tyranny of the parliament will, will necessarily impose a presidential victory for the NDC. And this is where it gets crucial, because the results of 2008, as published, had Dana Kufado leading in the first round mm -hmm. with four, 49 point something, looking, we're leading by 100,000 votes, looking for 25,000 votes to clinch the 50% plus one votes. He didn't get it. But the problem Nana Kufado had is not so much about looking for 25,000, but the fact that the NPP, his party, had been defeated in parliament by five. Because the NPP had been defeated in parliament, it was an unsustainable argument for Kufado in the second round. Even though he led by as much as 100,000, that 100,000 was going to whittle away because the parliament, the tyranny of the parliamentary outcome was going to victimize him. He was going to be a victim of the tyranny of the parliamentary outcome. That's what happened in 2008. Akufado was a victim of the tyranny of the parliamentary outcome. Because if you reverse it, if Professor Mills was the one who was leading by 100,000 and had won the first round, because his party, the NDC, had won the parliamentary elections, he would have clean swept the second round, like Kufado did in the year 2000. But Akufado's difficulty in 2008 was that the MPP had been defeated, and that means a, a lead of 34 had been whittled away. You need a kind of a certain kind of swing to do that, but it's not a very massive swing. So this is the tyranny. 2008 is a classic example of the tyranny of the parliamentary outcome. Let's look at 2012. What happened in that election? Okay, so in 2012, of course, as you say, the, the, in this time around, the NPP actually went to court. Um, Perhaps different no, let's, let's start with the 2012 election. What happened? Okay, so 2012, NPP. Okay, in 2012, the um, constituencies had increased to 275. 275, as we have now. Yes. Yeah. And the N, N, NPP lost, uh, but having one, having gotten one, two, three constituencies. The 123. 123. Uh -huh. And the NDC won with 148. What's the difference? So the difference was 25. 25. Yeah. Okay. So that's 2012, another important election. President Mahama was a declared winner, and the MDC had won 25, 225 seats in Parliament, yeah. a majority of 25. Okay. And then in 2013, the election petition was mounted. The election petition was mounted on the presidential election, because Akufuado and his petitioners were making the point that they had won the presidential election. They didn't talk about Parliament. The reason why that again was difficult to sustain, even though the evidence that the court, some would say, suggested that there were many difficulties with the election, the reason why that was not sustainable is that Akufado's party had been defeated in the parliament and they had lost the parliament by 25. How then were they making the point that they had won the presidential election? That's the thing. Once again, another classic example of the tyranny in Ghana of the outcome of the parliamentary results. Let's look at 2016 and see what happened. Okay, so in 2016, the NPP won by such a wide margin of 63 
winning 169 constituencies at the end 169 constituencies yeah and they have a lead of 63 63 going into election 2020, 2020 yeah. okay so this is the pro problem now for the ndc to have a chance of winning the presidential election they will have to overcome the 63 parliamentary seats that the npp have over them the majority of 63 must be broken and defeated by the ndc if they are not able to do that they will not be able to make any sustainable challenge that they have won the presidential election. That's the tyranny of the parliamentary results outcome in Ghana. If we want to change this and strengthen our democracy, we will have to go back to the old system and have the presidential election run on a separate day for parliamentary to election to run on a separate day. Because what will happen is that Akufada and President Mahama can run the election on a separate day, presidential election. Somebody can win. Within two weeks, we go to parliamentary election. In that two weeks, politicking will go on. The Ghanaian people may decide that, let us give the vote to the one who lost the presidential election so that we can have a president from this party and parliament from this party, and let's see how they work together in the interest of our country. As it is now, Ghana's democracy is unlikely to ever have that situation, which is the backbone of American democracy. So in America, what they do is that they have a midterm election. So all the time, almost all the time, you see that in the midterm election, the party in opposition wins. So Donald Trump is the Republican president. He doesn't have majority in parliament because parliament is controlled by the Democrats. And the Democrats got to control parliament in the midterm election. Ghana's democracy is heading for a particular danger if we are not able to fix this tyranny of the parliamentary outcome. What we need to do is to go back to the original thinking, have the presidential election run on a particular day, and have the parliamentary election run on a separate day. As it is, for the NDC to win 2020, they would have to undo the parliamentary 63 of the MPP. That will require a major national vote swing to get the MPP out of their parliamentary majority. But we have President Kufo giving the MPP some advice on that. Richard, you should see it. He talked about how they contested the Monsi. Jones, 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 let me pick. Uh, Jones. Hello? Aha, uh -huh. everything cool? Yes, sir. I sent you something, eh? uh, some President Mahama uh, poster. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. It go do, do this uh, in broadcast, the Facebook one. Yes, sir. So it go start 8.15. So I'm thinking that by the time we will come on air at 9, he wouldn't be done. So what we go do be say, when I introduce the program, we go pick the President Mahama live. Then uh, I'm thinking he will finish like 9.15, 9.30, but we'll take him till at least 9.20. So if he hasn't finished at 9.20, we'll take him off and do our main program. So let's get our phone lines ready in case we can take, in, in case he says something controversial, we can take some two or three phone calls for that before we go to the main program. Yes, sir. The main program, we have some pastor, uh, Reverend Kwapon, he'll come and talk about Father's Day. That's like 10 minutes. Then we go talk about MPP primaries, and then we go show that Ajwa Safu and Michael Kwedi are filled. So I beg. So by by eight thirty, yeah. The name for the I don't know in name. Oh, I go look the thing and send you. And then I'll discuss the topics. Yeah, I go send you everything. So I beg. Make we talk again at eight o'clock. Okay, sir. All right, all right, cool. Thank you. Okay, so sorry about that. That was my. My boss producer is called Jones. He's in the studio. So let's go now and see what President Kofo actually said. Uh, he told us about why the MPP lost the 2008 election. It had to do with parliamentary primaries. I believed the 2000 election should have come our way. We should have won it. 2008, I mean, we should have won it. Because we had performed so well, economically, socially, the mood of the country was really sweet. Unfortunately for us, uh, we went into the 2008 election uh, with some splits within our ranks. For instance, 18 of our members stood independent in parliamentary elections. It didn't help us. That didn't help us. Uh, if they hadn't done it, Nanadu would have won one touch.